Hello, this is Cherry Hart 3, the Word of God and the Prophetic. Many years ago, I watched a video. I think it was off of television. I think it was off of television. And these churches, it was several of them, practice picking up snakes and things like that. So, you know, and I happened to go on uh, internet and recently and i saw that they did one last year and they, they i guess it's an ongoing thing because i found something for 2022 people are taking this out of content Ugh. um and they're going by this scripture right here he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved but he that believeth not shall be damned and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name shall they cast out devils they shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So they're taking these um, uh, snakes and saying, okay, if you get struck, you know, you can lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Wisdom and common sense will mean this because of the power that they have or the anointing that they have without them realizing it picking up a snake and moving it out of the way or uh, accidentally drinking something that someone tried to poison you god can deliver so it's not like you to and people are literally taking poison and drinking it and trying god now and i've seen where this man's hand of fingers was decapitated and um he said oh i've been bit like four times or things like that, and I'm still living. But see, God was having mercy to let you live. And yes, God allows, um, I, I believe he allowed someone to see that he does deliver. You, you have an appointment for death. And I'm sure in the back of their mind that God was letting them know that maybe you shouldn't do this. There's no way. God warns you because that's that stupidity. And this time a guy, I seen him choking and he didn't go see a doctor. I guess he was playing with the snake and the snake struck him on the head and then he began to vomit and things like that. And he said, well, just let me die on a mountain, you know, and they're still out there rebuking the devil and, you know, trying to, um, and, and the guy ended up dying and several others end up dying. Acts 28. And when Paul gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, okay, he was not playing with a viper he wasn't looking for a viper but because paul was anointed he gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire there came a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand and when the barbarians saw the venomous beast hang on his hand they said among themselves no doubt this man is a murderer he have escaped the sea yet vengeance suffer not to live so he had, and so they're thinking, okay, maybe he was a murderer because uh, people see snake as a bad sign. And so they watched him and they said, okay, so he might have escaped, but now it caught up with him and vengeance suffered not to live. And he shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. And because he didn't know the, the viper uh, just grabbed onto his arm. So when he shook it, he shook it out with faith. Or he's like, this is not going to bite me. So he went on. And it says, how big they looked when he should have swollen. So I guess when you get struck by a snake, you get you swell up quick. Or falling down dead suddenly because it's like very poisonous. But after they had looked a great while and saw no harm to him, they changed their minds and said that he was a god. But he was, he was protected by God. He didn't purposely grab it. This is like in Moses' days. And let's talk about the snake. And the people spake against God and against Moses because they was discouraged on their way trying to go through Edom to get to that land of Jacob that was promised. The land of Jacob or the land of Israel. So they complained to God, against God and, and God didn't like that. Wherefore have ye brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there was no bread. Neither is there any water or our soul really wants this bread. God don't like murmurs. And the Lord sent fiery serpents, not just serpents, fiery serpents. They were very poisonous and they were 
to, to uh, God destroyed them. That's basically why he sent the serpents. But he sent them among the people and they bit the people. That's not a good sign. And much people of Israel died. Now he didn't say mess with the snake, pick up the snake. Um, that is a sign of when you pick up a snake and you, and you, um, flirting with it, uh, flirting with death and you swinging around your neck, you're asking for death. Therefore, the people came to Moses and said, we have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee, praying to the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. This is not to be played with. And the Lord said unto Moses, make thee a, a fiery serpent. So what God was doing is reversing the curse. He sent live fiery serpents and their job was to kill. But then um, God allowed them to make a fiery serpent out of brass. Now this is not, uh, and they were healed by God, not by the same, uh, not because it was an idol, but he was just reversing the curse. He set it up on a pole. He's, um, he, he, he told Moses to set it on a pole and it shall come to pass that everyone that is bitten or had been bitten when he looked it up on it shall live. And Moses made a serpent of brass and put it up on a pole. And it came to pass that if a serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. And this is the example that Jesus used about, um, um, the serpent in John three, it says, and no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the son of man, which is in heaven. So I'm just going to say it like this. God sent the fiery serpents, but he told Moses to make it out of brass and lift it up. And as Moses lifted up the servant in the wilderness, even so must the son of man be lifted up that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Now those, the, the brass serpent, uh, God allowed them, the people to have their life back. God lifted up as Moses lift up the serpent, put it on the pole. So Jesus was using the example as, um, I have to be lifted up so that you can live as well, but forever. And if they drink any daily thing, it shall not hurt them, but it is not something on purpose, but because they didn't know. Um, and they had this faith, God delivered them, but you can't go flirting with death and, um, pick up a venomous <laughs> snake or drink something poison. Cause you know that it's poison and you know, the poison kill. So you can't use faith like that. That's witchcraft. But it's unbelievable the people are still practicing that. Satan could not wait. And you are doing a foolish thing. And the way some of these, when I saw this video of how this snake struck him, it's like he was right on the head. And it's like, I believe the spirit of evil was in this. And if you're going to make your life a sacrifice, to prove something to man, then I'll just go on and strike it. And so you can never embarrass God, but they embarrass themselves because this guy did not even go seek help, but foolishness would get you killed. God didn't mean for mean for people to do foolish things, doing things on purpose and knowing that something's, uh, uh, a poison or, um, but this is out of content. He didn't say just go and pick up a snake to prove something. It's just saying that it won't get in the way or, you know, if you pick up the snake, it won't hurt you. It's not going to bite you. But you got to remember where they were. There were a lot of uh, serpents and um, cobras and things like that. And it could get in the road. But if they pick it up and move it out the way or something like that, it's not going to, but you don't put it around your neck and, um, Cause it's like you have the serpent that was in the garden in the church with you, just flinging it around and you know, Satan could not wait.
to go ahead and strike you. And God allowed it to happen because you've been warned many times. And I know you have this gut feeling that you shouldn't do this, but I'm going to use my faith. That's not the type of faith that God was telling you to use when you do silly things like that. So a lot of men lost their lives. So you can't be going playing around with these um, things that harm you. This was just to say that you will be pro protected if you did not know. So you have it now as this. The serpents was on the ground in the wilderness. Jesus was on the ground in the wilderness. God told Moses to make a brass serpent and put it on a pole. Jesus was put on a pole. He died on the cross, but he was lifted up. As the people looked up and received life, Jesus, when he died on the cross and he rose up, and that's why he said uh, about him ascending. Then he said, believe and you shall have eternal life. And the people believed that they would be healed because it was told to them. So them desperately looking up, knowing that they're going to be healed, they went by faith. So you have the pole, the wilderness, you have the ground, you have the pole, lift it up or look up and live.